What's going on everyone? So, I just got back from vacation. I have been off for the last week. I um, went camping with the family, so had a pretty good vacation, but now we are back at it. So it is Sunday, we just got back uh, last night, and I figured I need to come out and get to work and get back into the habit of doing something. So what we're going to do today is the guys were here working over the week, a couple days, and like always, they leave everything a mess it's really not that bad but it's dirty so what we're going to do this morning is we're going to clean the clean the shop and get it back put together and then i am going to start working on the can am and I also got a couple valves back from my dad who turned them down on the lathe. So he turned down these intake valves on the lathe. So I need to lap those in as well to see what they look like. We also need to check the deck on those heads. So hopefully, hopefully, we can get this motor put back together here sometime soon. And my goal is to get the Can-Am motor back together by the end of this week and back in by, back in and running by the following of the fall, in two weeks. I, these projects are just going on way too long. And right now we're in between big jobs. We're waiting for when we can go and cannot because one is a rental cabin and it's booked. So this week's kind of going to be a hit or miss week, but after that, we're going to start be probably rolling around in here a good bit. Um, plus, I also would like to get a jump start on the Explorer. Uh, we have, I don't know if I've documented it a whole lot, but that's it out there. Um, I've had that thing forever. Picked it up for next to nothing. I have... It's basically my beater I don't ever want to get rid of for some reason. But um, over the winter, I completely rebuilt the motor, um, rebuilt everything in the front end, rear end. Absolutely everything is brand new on that thing. Fired it up, ran perfect, and then shut it off because I didn't have any cooling in it. It was just a test fire. After start, I've never been able to get the thing start again. So I don't know what the problem is with that um security lights blinking i replaced the transponder and i replaced the pcm and neither of those two have fixed it so that's gonna be something else that project has drug on for well over a year now um so i need to get that thing ready because that's uh, a backup company vehicle slash my i want to make my daily driver um, to bump around in so but yeah let's uh set you guys up here and we're gonna do a little shop clean
All right, so we got the shop straightened up. It is by far spotless clean, and we got motors everywhere, parts everywhere. It's just one thing after another, but we're in our busy season, so it's just gonna have to wait. We catch up in the winter, and then come spring, we're back packed. But eh, it is what it is. It's whenever we get time to work on this stuff, it is low on the totem pole priority. So we we'll usually leave this bay right here open to pull whatever we need in to get it in and out and working on it. But yeah, so we got the shop clean. Um, so I am going to work on getting the computer program running for the Can-Am. I'm gonna go over a few things on the Can-Am um, and then I am going to lap set of uh, three valves in on that motor and check the heads and then we'll catch up with you guys here in a few. All right, so I think we're just gonna make this a little video on the, yeah, that thing, the 4L. So we got the head, it's clean. So I'm gonna check these three valves. We're gonna lap them in. Uh, sorry, not really in the frame there. But we machine them down on the lathe. So we need to lap them in, make sure they're good. And then I'll machine the other three intake valves. And then we're gonna take our, our uh, straight edge here and check to make sure the head is not warped in any way, shape, or form. So yeah, let's uh, let's get to it. All right, so over on the bench, I labeled all the valves. So 14, I know, goes with F1. So F1, there's only marking there. There ain't marking on the other side of the head. So this would be 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Or it might be 14, 15, 16. I don't know how I labeled them, but I know this one goes in that hole. So what we're gonna do, we'll put some lapping compound right there, run it around here. And then come in there. We will put it in there. And yes, I'm not going to the full extent to see if these leak or not right now. If I can get them close enough, then I can lap them in good enough to where uh, they won't leak. So, I'm looking for my blocks for my holders, and I don't have them. All right, let me catch up with you guys. All right, I got my box. So now get the tools out. And hopefully one of these will stay. So when you're lapping a valve in, I know everybody's gonna yell at me and say, I think the correct way, yada yada. Well, this worked for the old timers for a very long time. So, let's go like that for a little bit. Lift the valve up, spin it. Lift the valve up, spin it. Come off the valve like that. Just kidding.
Alright, let's see where we're at. And I don't know if the camera picks it up, but that looks like it, that is going to work. That looks really good. Now, another trick you can do <clears throat> when lapping these valves in. I don't have any hose this size or else I would show you, but you can hook this, hook a piece of hose on the stem, the valve stem, chuck it into your drill, and spin it. That's how I... <laughs> If I got a leaky valve, that's what I usually do because you can get that thing spinning so much faster than you can with the little tools and help seed them. But this one looks really good, so I'm going to go grab the other one and we'll see how it turns out. Alright, so we'll work on this one now. A little lapping compound on there. going to give it a back and forth motion like this, just back and forth, one hand going forward, one hand going backwards, keep lifting it up and spinning it, and um, man, I really hate these tools, alright, let's see what that looks like. It just needs to lap down a little more before I can give an answer on how it looks. It's starting to show the ring on the bottom, but I ain't getting one on the top. So let's some more compound on it. Let's put her back in. Things really starting to aggravate me today. Okay, I'll do this another way. So I just took the drill to the end of the stem. I just keep a little bit of pressure on the end of the valve. The 
Don't go real tight on your chuck because you don't want to hurt your valve stem. I would prefer to use a hose, but I don't have a hose that side. Ah, we're starting to get that one looks so much better. Alright, we got a good ring around there. That one's good. So let's move on to the third one. Alright, so I got the other valve in, hooked up. Spinning it. You don't want to go very fast. You don't need to go very fast and just keep keep pressure on it. Not tons of pressure. That one done. Let's see what it looks like. That one looks good, good. Real good. Really, really good. Alright. Well, let's uh so these so put this back. I'm gonna clean this deck up a little bit. And then I'll show you how I check heads for levelness. Or if they're worth not levelness, whatever. Yeah. Sit this back in. So I've already cleaned this head. It's just got some surface rust built up on it because just don't have the time to get this stuff done. So I'm just gonna run back over it real quick. Didn't take much, like I said, it was already clean. So, let me get my tools of engagement. Alright, so, just get you a, a straight edge. This one's made for heads. Um, it's just an OEM tools. Uh, you can get it off Amazon or eBay. So, what you do is you want to check around here where, where where your seal is on your rings or your head. So I can faintly see the old lines just from where they kind of ended, they didn't end it into the metal, but I can see. So I always check like this, like this, like this, like this, and like this. And how you check them, get you a set of fueler gauges. Now this is some basic old school stuff here. So we're going to want to be between two, I got my two, seems to me I've had these apart, so bear with me, tucking them apart and they're not in order. Alright, so all I got is two. I don't know where my one is. So we're going to clean that off really good. I usually like to try to play, I don't want no bigger than a two. Let me uh, let me see if my bent gauges have got ones in them. Alright, I took a just regular set of fueler gauges and bent them. Uh, it's just the easiest way to check valve lash and a Cummins to have bent ones. And I didn't have bent ones, so I just made me a set. So we're going to check it. I guess, and basically, 
just going to run where it seals here and see if you can get get it under so two goes under there two goes under there two goes under there two two hold on I got my speed racers coming in all right sorry my boys wanted to come in so we're getting twos in here and they fill one bad. Let's see uh, how much bigger it is. I need to go back through and I need to look in the manual and see what the specs are. So three. So three is pretty much the happy medium. It's pretty snug. Let's go down here and check it. Three feels good that way. Hey, that's pretty good if you ask me so we know that one's three thousand mark that head and we'll grab the other one boy this head's pretty dirty I don't think I've cleaned this one yet so, I haven't even went over this one, so let's go ahead and just clean it off. So what I like to do is I get these little uh, scotch guard pads off Amazon that just go into a uh, right angle Dremel. I go over it and knock carbon off. I know there's a bunch of conflict on if you should or if you shouldn't. I've done hundreds of heads. I've never had a single problem doing this. You don't sit there and just burn it in in one part because then you will leave an indent. You just go real fast and go back over it multiple times and keep moving is the big key.
Alright, now we'll work on cleaning those up. I'm going to grab another tool. I did not realize that I didn't have this cleaned up. So, we'll clean these up. I'll show you how I do that. And we'll clean the whole head up. Alright, so what I use is a Dremel. With a little wire wheel on the end of it. And I'm just trying to get the carbon knocked off in here. And I don't try to get down in the valve seals or seating. I'll go down under it. But where the uh, the valve sets, I don't do that. I let the when I lap the valve in take care of that. And if I see any ports that are real dirty or got gunk on them, I'll run over it. that cleaned up good enough for now. Now we'll move on to our exhaust side. Close the door boys. clean these up too, uh, too awfully good because I'm going to have to get these broken studs out of there. So, I'm going to move over here to the intake side. for a battery. Battery engaged. Alright. Now let's move up here to the valve cover.
down in there and try to get out. Alright, so got that all cleaned up. Now, let's flip it back over to what we were working on. But, it kind of shows you. So, let me get you guys set up. So, what I do, how, how I do my steps when I'm doing a head. So, when I pull it off completely together with the valve still in it, I bring it over to my parts washer. Now let me tell you, if you can afford and get a good heated water parts washer, lifesaver, amazing. I have the old one, another one that does solvent, does a good job, but heated one by far the best. I wish I could have afforded one a lot longer <laughs> when I bought that one, but I just couldn't and I ended up finding a good deal on one eventually, so I got it. Um, so I'll put it in here, I wash them up, and then I take them over to the bench, I completely strip them down, I pull the valves out, pull the valve seals off, and then I go over everything, uh, as far as going over everything, I clean it up like this, this one had come from the parts washer, and I didn't do the final stage of cleaning, but it got the valves out, um, and I check the, I uh, lap all the valves in to see where they're at. So that way if I know if I need to do any major work on them. So then I clean the heads up just like we just did. And now we're going to clean it off with some brake clean. And we'll run the straight edge across it. Alright, so we're going to clean it up. But I did go ahead and check um, the other head. I pulled it up in the book real quick because I wanted to just double check. But you don't want to be no more uh, than three. Uh, four is too much. We can get the four in the other one. So that is good. It's within spec. So we'll spray a little brake clean on here. Just cleaned up and now let's throw our straight edge on. Let's go ahead and wipe our straight edge off. Give me a little burr. Make a big difference. Alright. Here's your straight edge. Three barely goes in. Barely goes in there. Barely goes in there. Down. Barely goes in there. Down. Barely goes in. Yeah, I can't get a four in. So, that one seems to be good. Four won't, won't even start to go in, so. I'm going to call his head good as well. edge up. Now, once I get this done, this step done, I know it don't need to go to the machine shop. So, we still got to pull these bolts out. I'm not doing that today. Um, 
But once we get those bolts out, then I will put this thing back in the parts washer, clean it up extremely good, and then we'll be on to final assembly. But thought I'd just throw this quick little video out here, show you guys how to do this, um, how I do it. You don't need the fancy tools um, most of the time. You usually can get by with uh, without doing it. If, if you go back to my older videos, I do have a complete teardown video of these heads. Um, but yeah, th this is just, you don't need the special tools. You can get by with what you have usually. Um, this case, yes, I did need to use a lathe to turn down the, all the intake valves. They were all pretty pitted. That was the reason why I turned those down. Um, but you don't need to always resurface your heads. You just need a straight edge and a set of fueler gauges. You're looking at it under $30 there. I think that OEM straight edge off Amazon uh, was 20 bucks. Set of fueler gauges. Um, they're like two dollars at your local auto zone maybe so that's all you need and just um you know you want to check around here you can see that's where your gasket sets and if you don't have the lines on there then take your new gasket and set it on there and then you know and then you just want to check it like this like this and then i go three times down and Look in your manual. Your manual will tell you what um, what your specs are. Uh, if you're if you're going this deep in a motor, you need to make sure that you get a good manual because it just you need to know that information. Some of this information you can't properly rebuild a motor without a good manual. Um, I know Google's really good these days. But then you have your Google warriors on there to tell you all, well, this is better than what the manual is. Go buy the book. Ford engineers or any of the automotive engineers, you know, put specs in there for a reason. So, um, you know, there is sometimes I disagree with them. But that's besides the point on, you know, specs like bore tolerances, um, you know, your head surfacing, a whole bunch of other stuff. You want to go buy the book on that. So, but yeah, this is going to be a wrap for this video. Um, I hope this helped anybody out. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one.